Almighty God, we ask for your presence to be here this day as we hear your word and understand your call for us in our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. More than half of my life. More than half of my life is how long I have been taking groups down to Mexico for annual home-building mission trips. When Tim Consalvi and the members of the Fellowship Committee suggested that Cinco de Mayo would be a natural time to celebrate 25 years of Mexico mission, I had not really taken time to reflect on what that really means for our church and for me personally. And then it hit me. 25 years. That is more than half of my life. Just barely, but still. <laughs> More than half. 25 years, 513 people, and over 150 houses later, I stand before you tremendously grateful. My heart is swollen with joy. My mind filled with wonderful memories of lives changed, and my soul at peace, knowing that we have endeavored together to dare to do what God has called us to do. 25 years ago, we could have never imagined that our experiences in Mexico would become a cornerstone not only for our youth ministries, but for our mission and service in this church. 25 years ago, I had no vision beyond my desire to provide a service opportunity for our youth during their spring break. But that's just the thing. We don't always have to know what will grow from our efforts to fulfill God's call in our lives, to fulfill a vision, a dream given. God just wants us to be daring enough to try. Often, my colleagues and others see me intoxicated with wild ideas and impossible dreams, and they might be right at times, but I can't seem to turn off the passion volume I have from my relationship with Jesus Christ and my desire to connect with the Holy Spirit in my life. 25 years ago, it never occurred to me that it might seem crazy to take a group of students who have never done a day of manual labor before in their lives <laughs> and plop them into an impoverished foreign landscape, hand them a hammer, saw, and nails, and let them build a house on the edge of a hillside. All I knew 25 years ago is that my friend, Jeff Peterson, had been taking his youth to Mexico over spring break, and I was looking for a mission trip. Could we just tag along? Could we dare to do this new adventure? I'm fairly confident that our consistent relationship with our Mexico mission projects has produced tenacity in my life. When we first began our work in Mexico, it was with a larger, well-experienced group from Oxnard that did all the planning and made all the arrangements all we had to do was raise a few shekels and join a caravan heading south. That was until the leader of this group two years later decided to go to seminary in Atlanta and did not leave a paper trail of how to organize a trip like this. So another friend in youth ministry and I, along with Alan, hopped in a car and headed south with no idea where exactly we would find Senor Lupe or anyone else related to Futuro del Oro. 
but under the guiding hand of the Spirit. We found our way to one of the houses we had built two years prior and started asking people on the street, do you know Senor Lupe and where we can find him? Sabe usted, Senor Lupe, y donde podemos encontrarlo? <laughs> See? It was close. It was close enough because we found him. And the rest is history. A rich, wonderful, deep, and abiding history built on faithful relationships with not only our Lord, but with the saints along the way. Even if you have not had the good fortune to travel with us to Mexico, I want you to see yourself a part of the history that has become Mexico Mission because you are part of this family of faith. Everyone in this sanctuary has contributed to this opportunity. Each and every dollar donated, each and every prayer offered, each and every cookie baked, each and every taco eaten, each and every participant commissioned, each and every good wish shared has made a difference. And it's made a difference forever and become part of our history. Congregation, members and friends of Canyon Hills Presbyterian Church, visitors and community members, parents and students, partners and donors, leaders and workers, you are why we continue to dare to do the work God has called us to. You are the inspiration that allows us to dare to find ways around potential obstacles along the way, like the ever-shifting school calendars, daunting weather conditions, changing leadership at Futuro, passport requirements, sensational media reports, and more frequent secondary inspections. <laughs> you, you, are the inspiration that encourage us to dare to dream about better ways to build these small homes. We began with 12 by 16 boxes with a single pitched roof. And now we have peaked structures that include a loft and even now in these last two years, 12 by 20 peaked roofed with two rooms. You are the inspiration that had us dare to add a weekend adult mission trip and allowed us to be audacious enough to put together a strike team with two weeks notice several summers ago. Congregation, you have helped us dare to do what God has called us to. Looking back on history, it might seem overwhelming putting together a service experience like this. When you think of all the logistics, the food, the transportation, the accommodations, the materials, the paperwork, the planning, the program, it seems a little intimidating. But in reality, the experience we are able to offer now is just a product of the lessons learned along the way and, the, and a whole lot of trust in the Holy Spirit. 25 years ago, I had no idea that we would have a magnificent cadre of experienced craftsmen, craftsmen and women in our church who would lead building teams. We call them site leaders. 25 years ago, I had no idea that these site leaders would also be so inspirational themselves that we would have students asking for a training program so that they could become site leaders. 25 years ago, I had no idea 
I could talk a half dozen of our members into getting their commercial driver's license so that we could transport all of our eager students safely to Mexico. 25 years ago, I had no idea that a team of Kathys and a few Lindas would see their passion in organizing and preparing food for hungry legions of workers. Who knew 25 years ago that Tijuana would have their own Home Depot so we could obtain materials needed for the homes that we could not take across the border any longer? If you had told me 25 years ago that all of this was all I needed, I would have said, forget it. I can't do it. But instead, step by step, this church dared to do what God called them to do so that today we can celebrate our 25 years of inspired service. You might think that the most important byproduct of this project are the homes that are constructed, but they are not. To be sure, the homes are a tremendous byproduct, a wonderful gift to the families we work with each year, a place for them to have safety and shelter, a starting place to grow and call home. But truly, the most important byproduct are the relationships built. Relationships with other team members, relationships with the families, and relationships with Pastor Lupe. Pastor Jose Guadalupe Juarez Diaz is a doer. He is a daring dreamer. He is a conduit for God's vision. He is a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ and a man who fearlessly follows the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Lupe and his family live in an impoverished area of Tijuana where we build. He provided for his family as a school janitor until he was forced into early retirement. Like most Protestant and Pentecostal pastors in the area, he had to work a full-time job while attending classes in ministry so he could become an ordained minister. He continued to work full-time as a janitor when he began his church in this meager neighborhood, his church, Iglesia Nuevo Pacto. Over the many years, his church has grown and changed and expanded. And if you have had the privilege of going over numerous years, you can witness it for yourself. Lupe never lacks for a vision of what is next. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Lupe raises support so his church can have a food bank for people with no means. Lupe's church has a specialized ministry caring for elderly men who are often left on the street to fend for themselves. Lupe houses destitute families in his church until they can get on their feet again. When people in the neighborhoods have need, he finds ways to meet those needs. He's tried his hand in bakeries and internet cafes, mini markets and snack shacks. He dares to do what the Lord asks. This is not a man of great material wealth. He does not give to others out of his abundance. He does not give just a tithe or less to the church. He gives all that he has, all that he is. He dares to immerse himself in the work of the Lord. Because Lupe has dared to do God's bidding, he has changed and transformed the neighborhoods around him. Sure, they are still poor by material standards, but they are rich in spirit. They have gladness and gratitude that is difficult to explain, and yet the experience is hard to forget. This past trip, just a month ago, one of the families we were building a home for was part of Lupe's church. 
The family had no money and the father was out of work. So Lupe hired him to work at his house so Lupe could give him money as payment so the man did not have to feel like it was charity. Mind you, the money that Lupe was giving him was from Lupe's own retirement wages. Here is a man by our own standards who has very little and yet was able to give another in a most merciful way. This past 25 years has been a gift. A gift that has allowed us to practice what the Apostle Paul instructs us in Colossians 3. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another, any of you who has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whatever you dare to do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father through him. We are God's chosen people. We have been chosen to do God's work, to dare to do God's work. We are called to love and to forgive and to be grateful. We are called to dare to do God's work in the next 25 years. What is next? Canyon Hills Presbyterian Church, what shall we dare to do next? Amen.